let's obviously address the elephant in the room. Um, in 2018, uh, I guess you took photos that have recently emerged of you at a antebellum plantation themed party. For the sake of further clarity, antebellum literally means in Latin before the war. Mm -hmm. And so the antebellum South is literally honoring the South before the war, the war in question, mm -hmm. the war that freed slaves. Yes. Many people have already seen the photos, but for the sake of those who haven't, and educating them on this topic discussion, I'm just gonna show them a picture. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at that photo, mm -hmm. what do you see? I see someone who was living in this, this ignorance it's without even like thinking about who it would be hurting. You know, I, I never once asked myself at any point, like, what's the tradition behind this? Um, what does this represent? You know, why, why do we wear those dresses? Um, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I didn't know any better because I could have easily asked myself those questions. You know, I never took the time to make that connection because if I would have taken the time, I easily could have understood what was wrong with it. I've heard a definition of prejudice. Prejudice is a willful commitment to ignorance. You were previously ignorant. Mm -hmm. Who do you blame for your ignorance? Was it your upbringing? educationally, familially, who do you blame for that ignorance? I don't want to sit here and blame my upbringing or where I, you know, where I grew up, the location of it, being raised in the South, like, they're, they're just, in my eyes, there's no excuse. Because I will say, I did get a lot of people saying, like, this is normal where I grew up. I don't think that that's what that stood for. I didn't know that, so it can't be racist, because I'm not a racist. And, I think that people need to realize that just saying like, this is normal where I came from or this is common where I came from, that doesn't make it right and that doesn't make it okay. Yeah, I think we need to all collectively do a better job of acknowledging that history is meant to be remembered, but not all history is meant to be celebrated. Yeah. And also recognizing there's a difference between being racist and racially insensitive or racially ignorant. Mm -hmm. I've been very intentional about saying what you did was racially insensitive. It was racially ignorant, and it plays itself out mm -hmm. as racism. Mm -hmm. But does. that doesn't necessarily classify someone as racist. You have to pull back the curtains and look at their intention. Mm -hmm. Was their intention malicious? But let me ask you, because so many people, specifically black people, people of color are wondering, mm -hmm. what took you so long to apologize? What took you so long to release a statement? I wanted to not just say the right words, just to have people accept them, but I wanted myself to really understand exactly why people were so hurt by this. Because, you know, I want, of course I want to do better. And... So what steps is Rachel Kirkconnell actually taking to do better, to be better, to learn, to grow? Talk me through what you're actually doing. I can sit here and I can give you a list. You know, I can say, I've been reading this and I've been watching these documentaries and these movies and I've been listening to these podcasts and it's great to educate yourself, but I don't think that anything is going, going to change if we don't take those actions to, to put that education into play. Now, you knew Matt, a black man, was going to be The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. You also knew these photos existed. Mm -hmm. How often did you lay awake at night worried that eventually these photos might come out and could ruin your life? Like being completely honest, I didn't think about it one time because at that point, you know, it was just me taking some photos with my friends and I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think of the trauma that it would cause. We just learned of you and Matt's breakup. Um, talk me through that conversation. When he first called me to end things, 
my, you know, my initial reaction was I was very confused. I was very blindsided. But once that initial reaction went away, I thought about, you know, how strong I thought our relationship was. So for him to end things, like, he must have been very, very hurt by everything. It was hard because I lost the love of my life, but in the process of that, I hurt him while doing so. You still love him, don't you? I love him so much and I, I always will.